what do you complain about? I mean, complaining normally seen as a, a bad thing. Uh, in this case, it's a great way to identify problems uh, where you uh, are the target market, right? Which means you should know something about your options and how painful it is, uh, what you'd be willing to pay, perhaps, to solve that uh, that pain. Uh, so uh, uh, part of the key here in you being right a, a, a representative of the target market is you you don't want to solve a problem that no one really has, right? You don't want to imagine or project a, 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 a problem out in the market. You want to feel it ideally firsthand and or uh, through, um, uh, you know, candid conversations with a number of prospective um, uh, uh, customers. Next, ask yourself, uh, have others already designed solutions? So if the answer is no, it's really kind of a, a, a binary at extremes here. Um, if there is no competition, it could be that your idea is great, or more likely that it's terrible. Now, yes, there's the, you know, um, uh, breakout Apple I fill in the blank that does not exist yet, and uh, so, so not much competition. But, but the reality is that there's always competition, even if competition is business as usual. Right? It's, it's, it's not changing anything. It's inertia. So said differently, or, or the, the, the flip side of the coin, rather, if there is someone who's already designed a solution to that problem, if there is competition, that can be good. That can be validation, right? Validation, it's a problem worth solving. But importantly, how will you stand out? Uh, different customers, different part of the market, uh, a different geography, different product features, uh, a different level of customer service, etc. Great analogy here, uh, one that um, I have answered incorrectly in past startups, startup, let's say. Um, are you creating or will you create a vitamin, so to speak, or a painkiller? Uh, the, the other way to think about it is, is, is what you're creating a nice to have or is it a need to have? Is it a top priority pain point or is it, yeah, it's a pain, but it's somewhere you know, number 27, let's say. So it's, it's not that, um, that, um, that uh, pressing, therefore someone may not pay attention to you and or uh, pay you for it. So a great product, to be clear, does not equal a great company. You could solve a problem, but if the problem is not important enough, top tier enough, that will not be a great company. Think about it like a headache, right? You, you've got to get rid of your headache, but for a vitamin, you know, it's something you don't really notice. It's long term. It's incremental. That's a harder sell versus versus a pain a pain pill. Are you super excited about it? So if your answer is basically wow, you know, like, I can't wait to get started. I could spend years working on this. Then look, clearly, your idea passes the test. You'll need right this kind of passion drive to stay focused on something for an extended period of time. If in contrast, the answer is more like, yeah, I think so. I, I probably can make some money, you know, with that. Then I and others would say, go back to the drawing board. You know, this this um, separation of answers to this question, uh, really kind of a, you know, hell yes or, or no, uh, comes from uh, Derek Sivers, who is, uh, you know, a great uh, author, speaker, entrepreneur, He's given multiple uh, TED Talks, great, great books to read on, on entrepreneurship. This, this is the source for this, uh, this question and these, these two answers. So please ask yourself right now, or as your idea develops, ask yourself again about your level of enthusiasm. Do I pursue quality or quantity? Uh, most of us, when we start out uh, thinking about a business opportunity, we think about quantity. We think about scale, right, uh, and, a, and a larger impact, a larger business. But ironically, it's not the place to start. So uh, one of the you know, best-known angel investors, advisors, uh, Paul Graham, has said, do things that don't 
scale uh, at first. Again, counterintuitive, uh, but it comes from lots of years of experience. By the way, uh, Paul Graham has a series of, I think, dozens of essays on the topic of entrepreneurship, and uh, I would suggest that you you read all of them probably in your free time. You know, in your free time. Uh, the the other way to think about this is 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 to go deep. He talks about digging a well, not many shallow holes. So this could be you know, um, uh, you know getting out away from your desk, away from the office or garage, right, or wherever you'd be um, incubating this new idea, getting out into the field, uh, going to someone's office, talking one on one, asking the follow on questions to get to kind of root desires, uh, and then really staying focused, right? To, to, to learn to say no to shiny objects, <laughs> the, the many other possible businesses you could pursue that you may come across in your path. Now, look, at some point, you could, you, you, early on, you, you could say that is a better path, a better business for X, Y, Z reasons, but don't zigzag repeatedly, especially when you're, you're, you're along the path some distance. What will the future need? So um, this comes up in ice hockey. To, the advice, right, is to skate where the puck is going, not where it is now, right? And so, you know, for for, for me, for in, in the in the renewable energy world, that translates to thinking about uh, battery storage, right? So, um, you know, uh, lithium ion batteries or some next generation batteries that are already making an impact ever so slightly um, uh, on the grid uh, at, at uh, you know, customers' businesses. Um, but that's going to change dramatically. You know, 100x growth between 2013 and 2022 is projected by IHS. But it's not happened just quite yet. It will. It will. And over the course of you all watching this video over the years, that transition will will happen. So, you know, how will we in our in our investor clients and or um, uh, developer or company executive clients, how should they, how should we help them prepare for that future where battery storage is more mainstream? Ditto for electric vehicles. They, they, they are a tiny niche so far, but by 2022, they'll be the same cost across most all types of vehicles, uh, as, that is as conventional vehicles. So as that changes, right? Um, how, do we, how do we prepare ourselves, our customers, our clients, our partners for that early before that actually happens? Your passions and your skills, when combined, uh, are, are very uh, unique. So we're not, uh, we're not robots, we're not one-trick ponies, and we don't just need to think about our work-related skills. Uh, combine your your hobbies, your your non-work skills, um, with your work skills and interests, and sometimes you, you arrive at unique combinations no one else has, and that that could be the sweet spot where you you know you you bring your whole self to work, if you will, where it becomes um, something that no no one else in the world is doing quite in the same the same way. <laughs> A focus, <clears throat> a focus on fabric for airplane chairs. Now, this is not really my advice uh, to you as a as a, an area of great growth opportunity. I just happened to be sitting on an airplane while typing uh, this slide. My, my point is that uh, you, you you don't need to believe that your business idea has to have a you know a mobile app to it or some sort of technology component to it. That is what gets a lot of attention, for sure. But the fact is that, that most global products and services are suboptimal. They've been overlooked for decades. They, they've lacked innovation for decades. And so, you know, to, 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 to drill a, a deep well, uh, as Paul Graham would say, in those sectors could be a great place for less competition uh, and large markets for hungry entrepreneurs. What are some key conclusions uh, from this presentation? Well, ideas for business are all around you. Carry a notebook and a pen and jot down moments of frustration throughout the day. Then ask, you know, could you or would you want to 
build a business around solutions to those problems. The middle, uh, don't follow everyone else. Uh, as Warren Buffett observed, uh, it's wise to be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. Uh, don't follow the, the herd mentality. Uh, that could mean you're late to the game, right? There's too much competition, let's say, for you to start that, that um, high potential uh, green building or renewable energy uh, startup. Uh, finally, to find a good business idea, sometimes you need to listen to potential future customers, and other times you need to ignore them and create something they can't yet imagine. Now, granted, that last strategy is a riskier play, uh, but could be more, let's say, blue ocean, if you will. Uh, that is a, a, a place with less competition and, and, and greater potential. And if you haven't uh, read the Blue Ocean Strategy book, I would encourage that as a, another, another helpful read. Finally, questions for you. So again, get out your notebook and pen. First, uh, what are three to five complaints that you experience regularly each week? Write them down now. They can be professional or personal. No, seriously, write them down. <laughs> the middle, uh, if you're looking at a list of potential business ideas, which ones are you really, really excited about? Uh, doing it just for the money, well, that's important, an important part of it, no doubt, um, uh, may not be enough. Finally, once you pick an idea, how will you stay focused and go deep instead of trying to pursue many options at the same time? Consider finding a business partner, again, or mentor, advisory board to hold you accountable. We all, we all need it. Thanks, and see you on the next video.